In this random hunts video, we are going to be doing some pigeon hunting at a grain silo, but this isn't going to be your typical bird blasting episode. We're going to be introducing some physics as well. Now, for the most part, if you're hunting, you're going to be dealing with some relatively subtle incline and decline angles. And for those subtle angles, you can use something called the Rifleman's Rule to figure out how that incline or decline will affect your bullet drop. The Rifleman's Rule takes your actual range to the target and multiplies it by the cosine of the angle you're shooting at to effectively give you the horizontal range to your target. And with that, you can reference the horizontal range to your drop charts and dial for that number. I'm sure most of you have heard of this rule before, but there's one big problem, and that is that the Rifleman's Rule doesn't always work very well. Let's look at some examples. I wish I could have filmed a little bit more on this day, but I didn't want to film any landmarks, so this video is mostly scope cam footage. This hunt happened in November 2019, so the footage is quite old, but just for context, I was using two different PCP air guns, an FX Crown Compact shooting 16 grain JSBs, and an FX Impact shooting 34 grain slugs. We didn't film any footage with the Crown though, so all the clips you're gonna see today are from the Impact. So here's the first shot. The distance to target here is about 60 meters, but I'm at a really steep incline, so I'll hold a bit under. And hold on, what happened there? Let's rewind. That slug hit a hole 1.5 mils higher than my aim point at 60 meters. I think we need to look at some graphs to try and understand what's going on here. All right, so the first graph. This is what my trajectory is supposed to look like with no incline. These lines that flare out are the mills or milliradians as seen through the scope. First zero is at 25 meters. The peak of the trajectory is a little less than half a mil over the center. Second zero at 55. And my point of impact at 100 meters is a little more than two mils under. The reason we see this curve in the trajectory is simply because of gravity pushing downwards. And gravity always pushes downwards. That's a rule you can rely on. Without gravity, this line would be completely straight. When you're shooting at an incline or decline though, the force of gravity is not acting perpendicular to the flight path of your bullet. So although the actual force of gravity is the same, it has less of an effect. The Rifleman's rule takes into account that gravity is always pushing downwards, and that's why we use the cosine of the incline angle and multiply it by your actual range to give you your effective horizontal range. Under normal circumstances, when the incline is only a few degrees, the rule works pretty well but let's see what happens when you apply that to a graph. My shooting distance was 60 meters and shooting angle was 60 degrees. The cos of 60 is 0.5 multiplied by 60 equals 30 meters. If this rule is correct, then according to this graph at 30 meters, my point of impact should have been about a quarter mil above zero. Except it wasn't. It was 1.5 mils above zero. Okay, let's put these same numbers into a ballistics calculator and found our new trajectory. Wow, okay, that's a crazy graph. I mean, my point of impact is almost one mil above zero at 100 meters. Looks like it can't possibly be true, but look at 60 meters. That's pretty much 1.5 mils hold under, exactly what we saw in real life. So the big question is, what is my ballistics calculator taking into account that the Rifleman's rule isn't? Before I answer that question, let's take a look at a few more shots. This one was taken from a similar distance and similar angle, and the result is exactly the same. Point of impact way above the horizontal crosshair for a perfect headshot. This one also did some beautiful aerobics on the way down. <laughs> this one was even steeper, so the actual point of impact is closer to two mils above zero. So how do I know that I haven't just, you know, bumped my scope of zero or bent my barrel or something drastic like that? Well, you validate your zero. And it's easy enough to do that. I just find a few birds around 25 meters away and, well, you get the idea. Nothing wrong with my scope whatsoever. That tells us that the error is in fact in the Rifleman's rule itself and not in my equipment. Now, I actually found the answer to this problem in a book that I bought earlier this year called Applied Ballistics for Long Range Shooting. It's a nice chunky thick book, but it's written by a man called Brian Litz, who just happens to be the man behind a company called Applied Ballistics whose software is in the Kestrel that I use to calculate those shots. Now what Brian recommends is that instead of multiplying the cosine of your incline angle with the distance, you should multiply it with your bullet drop. And by bullet drop, I don't mean your point of impact. I mean the actual drop from your bore line where the straight line from your bore would be zero. 
So looking at my ballistics chart here, let's validate that. 60 meters with no incline, my drop would be 20.5 centimeters. Now let's take my graph here with the 60 degree incline taken into account and at 60 meters subtract 20.5 multiplied by cos of 60 which is 10.25 centimeters. Now based on the fact that each square on this grid is half a centimeter we can actually just go to 20.5 blocks down. That puts us over here a little over one centimeter below zero. And let's look at our original graph. It matches exactly what we just calculated. So there's your answer. Knowing the horizontal distance of the shot you're about to take isn't necessarily going to help you very much, especially with extreme angles like this. It's actually going to give you completely the wrong answer. Many rangefinders give you the horizontal distance and some even give you the cosine of the angle. However, the moral of the story here is that you should really be using a ballistics calculator like Strelok Pro on your, on your smartphone, or in my case, a combination of the Sig Sauer BDX and Kestrel 5700 which work together to give me a quick firing solution. I'm not saying you have to buy a ballistics calculator, but I am saying that you will struggle to take your shot fast enough if you are doing maths in your head or rummaging through pages of written ballistics cards. At the end of the day, most air guns and firearms are capable of the precision required to take shots like this. It all comes down to the mathematics and physics of trying to predict where that projectile is going to end up. And as long as your input data is correct, a ballistics calculator like the Kestrel I use will not fail you. Of course it helps to have a fast high BC projectile like the slugs I'm using as they resist atmospheric effects like wind drift and drag a lot better than a pellet would and I attribute that as a huge factor being able to hit these birds all the way out past 100 meters in the wind at these crazy angles. And that's where we're going to bring this one to a close. In the next video you're going to start to see footage with the element scopes for the first time on my channel. These are a few clips I took through the scopes just to show you the clarity and we have some awesome hunting footage courtesy of Gerard Slabbit coming once again. Until then, thanks for watching guys. I'm going to leave links down below to the ballistics book that I've been reading. It's absolutely awesome. I'm going to leave links to the Kestrel that I'm using and the Bluetooth rangefinder that works together with the Kestrel. And I'm going to leave a link to Airgun 101 where you can watch extended versions and early releases of all of my videos. Thanks for watching and stay indoors. <laughs>